Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest joining us this morning. That's right. We have Miss Nina Turner. Welcome. Good to be back home. How are you feeling? Senator Nina Turner. Senator Nina Turner. That's I'm right. I apologize. I'm Senator. Mighty fine. There you go. Yeah. You, you know, man, I'm so glad to have you here because I love when a voice of reason comes on, on a week like this week. I, g- I gave Donkey a day earlier this week to uh, the Republicans in Congress who won't pass any common sense gun reform. But I also gave it to President Biden because it really pissed me off to see him say there's nothing I can do without, without Congress. I just have to plead to them. And we know that's the case. But damn, can't you call out some names? Talk about some of these senators that are getting money from the gun lobbyists, these senators that are, you know, their campaigns directly benefited from the NRA. That's all you got is I can't do nothing but plead to them. Yeah. I mean, to have the most powerful person in the world say they can't do yes. anything. Then the people in the hoods where they misunderstood, whether it's rural hoods, urban hoods, suburban hoods, what about them? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have higher expectations of the two toddlers in my life than we do of elected Mm -hmm. officials, particularly the president of the United States of America has the largest bully pulpit in the world. Gas up the jet Mm -hmm. and let these fools know I'm coming to Tennessee. Gas up the jet in places where there are gun violence and let folks know I'm coming there. It it is unacceptable, uh, Charlemagne and DJ, to have... The president of the United States of America, and quite frankly, any member of Congress to say that they're powerless, there's always something you can do, mm-hmm. even if it's using the bully pulpit or letting folks know, I'm not leaving this place. Calling it, I would be calling in all those manufacturers and let them know, ain't nobody leaving this place mm-hmm. until we find a solution. Because guess what? I'm ready to die on this hill. And I don't mean physically die, but hey, I'm the president of the United States of America. I don't give a damn if I get another term. But what what's about to happen is some true action and real common sense gun reform in the United States of America because it is immoral to allow babies to die at the rates that they're dying in these schools. And what are your thoughts? What, what, you know, what do you think can slow some of it down, right? We've had so many mass shootings in this year alone. You know, we talk about, it's funny, you know, uh, when I heard Mexico say, you know, America said, don't go to Mexico, it's dangerous. And then Mexico's president says, uh, I think America's a little right, more dangerous. Yeah, 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 a little yeah, more dangerous. Right, yeah. So when you talk about all these these shootings, these mass shootings, and these guns using these high powered rifle, and, and and these people being able to purchase guns and not getting any type of mental checks or really any type of background checks, then you look at what Bill Clinton did in what 2000 and, 2004. 2004, where they banned AR-15s for ten years or whatever it may be. So what do you think can happen? What do you think can be done realistically? It's a combination of those things. We as a nation need to reevaluate the worshiping of the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is not God. It is not an absolute right. And there is no way that the framers of this country could have even imagined the type of firepower that we have today. It is called taking action for the 21st century. Mm. And it is, it is again, it's a, moral, it's a matter of morality here. Mm-hmm. And you're going to continue to let the NRA run this nation. Is this the United States of the NRA or is this the United States of America? So first of all, we need some people with some balls to stand up against this lobby and to push legislation through. But that's in state houses too. Mm -hmm. We're losing losing ground in a lot of state houses as well. So we need governors, we need members of General Assembly, but in particular, we need the level of government that has the biggest stick, and that is the United States of America. And then we as everyday citizens have a role to play as well. It is not just on elected officials, it is on us. These mass shootings are a reflection of us. And Charlie, I know I'm going into your lane. I mean, you talk a lot about mental health challenges. Now, not everybody, because I'm sick and tired of people saying this person got a mental health challenge. They labeling everybody with really diagnosed mental health. Mm-hmm. Everybody that's diagnosed with a mental health challenge is not going out there being violent. But do we as a country have a mental health problem? Ooh. See, that's the problem. Ooh. America has a mental health problem. And anytime you let a small lobby like the NRA control whether or not we're going to have common sense gun reform, then that tells us that there's something wrong with us. So in summation, it is a combination of both laws, but also the spirit of America. Who do we want to be? And it is, is it okay for us to have our babies dying, either at mass shootings that happen in schools or other public places, and also what is happening in some of our communities? I love how you said, who do we want to be? Because I hate when people say things like, this isn't who we are. Oh, it's who we are. Exactly. <laughs> exactly who yeah. we are. Now, what do, you, what do you think about, you know, Charlemagne and myself, we were talking the other day uh, and with Tesla and Trigger, talking about love. teachers possibly having firearms or, you know, police officers around schools more or I, I even said maybe, security, maybe parents maybe parents got to take a shift where they don't have to necessarily have guns but just somebody that can call 911 pretty fast you know 
Um, and, and I don't think that if you, you're a parent, you're going to look out for them kids a little more because your kids are one of those kids, you know? Sure. And I commend those cops because the way those cops ran in that building with, with no armor on, no helmets on, no face mask on. I mean, they didn't have no body on, but they were like, we're going to go get we going to go get this killer. So what are your thoughts on, on some of those things that people have been talking about the last couple of days? I mean, what we going back to the wild, wild west. You want to arm teachers instead of getting to the root of the problem. You can arm every teacher in America. That's not going to get it at the root of the problem, because if somebody is really determined to be a mass shooter, they ready to die. Mm -hmm. That's right. On that day, I'm ready to die because I know that the chances that I may die are very high and I'm just going in to do this again. You can't solve the gun problem with more guns. Mm hmm. We got more guns than any other nation per person in this in this country. So it is, I, I mean, and parents are already armed. There's, I know a lot of armed parents, but that is not necessarily the solution. The solution is getting at the root of the problem is mental health. And I'm not talking about diagnosed people, but we have a mental health problem in this country, an mm -hmm. addiction to guns. That's number one. Number two, we need other types of services that wrap around a community to try to prevent this from happening the goal is prevention the goal is not to have people to act when it's happening now dj i love the idea of having parent patrols in the city of cleveland there was a councilwoman she's no longer here on this plane of existence she's in the ancestral plane but her name is fanny m lewis and she had a program where she funded parent patrols in and around schools now they weren't armed mm -hmm. but it was just the very nature of their presence so could there be a beautiful thing in helping a community and funding, paying people to be out there? And they don't have to physically be a parent, like biologically be a parent, mm -hmm. but people in the community, particularly men, because we need some more man energy. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn what nobody else got to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm every woman. And I'm fine with saying that we need some more man energy because mm -hmm. I know some of them folks out there don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we need some more man energy out there. And especially in black communities to see black men out there around schools mm -hmm. in some cases too many of our households in the black community are run by women because you know certain things are popping off i get it but to love and embrace a community there's an african proverb that says it takes a village and let the village come together and women too i'm not saying we don't need women but so many children don't even have the presence of a real strong loving man in their lives they don't see male teachers because teaching is not necessarily a profession that men gravitate to because the pay too damn low while we at it let's go on and increase right. the pay mm -hmm. of teachers the people that mold minds but that parent patrol is an excellent idea it has been done before and we should do it again the goal is to prevent it from happening not to act when it happens i like the parent patrol idea but i i do say i feel like if there are parents who you know have weapons and you know they're licensed and trained to use them i wouldn't mind them being able to carry those weapons either black well, panther style well you know law well, you I'm can't a, you can't a, carry you can't like you can't i can't carry saying, my if you're gonna be part of a patrol school if you're gonna I mean, be part of the law. patrol of the school i think you're licensed to carry i think you should be able to, to carry if people have a license to carry i'm not saying that i'm against that all mm -hmm. i'm saying is that if everybody's arming up Mm -hmm. And we think that that is the sole way to solve the problem. My position is that that is not the sole way to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And it's not even the best way to solve the problem. I agree with that. But I'm not saying people shouldn't be armed up. I mean, I got people in my life that are in law enforcement. My son is a police officer, for God's sakes. Mm -hmm. So I, I get it and I understand it. But we can't outgun the guns. Well, see, but I was going to say one other thing. The only problem with that is, is there's still racism that exists, right? Of course. And my fear is you give authority to a, a, a person a parent to walk around with a gun and then they see a black person coming to the school and all of a sudden they they might be on high high alert because they're like i don't know this person my kid might go to that school right. that's the only thing that makes it that's a little why scary. it turns into not, a zimmerman situation yeah you I, you took the words right out of my mouth that's why we can't depend on that as the sole a source mm -hmm. of solving the problem got you but people are armed you know we get that what was that bipartisan safer communities act that they passed last summer that where they said 15 republicans signed on and it was supposed to be some type of gun reform because clearly it didn't do much no because they don't want they they playing games this is an illusion for these folks because they kids ain't going to the schools that's getting shot up mm. so they don't care about big mama and big papa's kids mm -hmm. and i mean all the kids i don't care if they're in the white community black community hispanic community asian community or the swirls in between because i can't name everybody <laughs> but pick your identity mm -hmm. hell pick it whatever one i'm talking about all the identities mm -hmm. it is not their children so they don't care enough if they cared enough this congress would have done something and they would be going to war with the nra Somebody going to die today. And I ain't talking about physical, but somebody going to lose something today. Mm -hmm. And it ain't going to be a mama or a daddy losing their kids. I feel like there's so many issues impacting America. I don't even know where to begin. Like, what's, what do you, what, what, what's on your mind? Like, well, I can't. One of the reasons why I'm here, and I'm mm -hmm. so glad. I, I love you guys, and I, I'm always invited to come back home when I'm here. But I am a senior fellow at the, at the New School Institute on Race, 
power and mm -hmm. political economy and is mm -hmm. led by one of the greatest uh, stratification economists, Dr. Derek Hamilton. And we just Derek. had a seminar, uh, a forum uh, just on Tuesday, and it was about the promises and the perils of black politics. Mm. And so that's very much on my mind because we as a nation, especially our black leaders, leaders like uh, Minister Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. are on record as the de defining the problem with white liberals and that white liberals are a big threat to black liberation. But there is a group of people in our society that get off that are let off the hook, and that's the black moderate. And mm. I happen to believe that the black moderate is the biggest threat to true black liberation because they are the gatekeepers in this society, in this, in these political spaces in in these high places. And so the black community must have some more family barbecues and we got to decide what we're going to do as a, as a community and, and stop continuing to be complicit in our own demise. Mm. I'm concerned that a segregationist governor is running the great state of Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that the things that we read about in history books, we are now reliving mm -hmm. and that the same spirit of like a governor Fabus and, and all of those other segregationist governors and senators and reps and all name them. It, they they manifest through some of these people who are in their 40s and 50s. Yeah, Strom Thurmond. Yeah, yeah, yeah Strom Thurmond's spirit is, is alive and well. Those are the kinds of things on my mind. It's on my mind that the people of East Palestine, a predominantly white community that voted over 70% for President Donald J. Trump, when a train derails in that working class and poor community, you got people like Joe, Joy Behart and all these other latte liberals saying they getting what they deserve because they voted for President Donald J. Trump. Doesn't every human being on this earth deserve clean water, clean air, clean Absolutely. food? And I don't give a damn who you voted for. They babies didn't right. vote for Donald J. Trump. We are becoming a heartless, not becoming, hell, we are another manifestation of who mm -hmm. we are, a heartless nation. But just because that is the reality today doesn't mean it has to be the reality tomorrow. So one of the things we're working on at the new school is taking the academy. This is not just about public. It's not just about coming up with great ideas in the academy. It's how can they be applied? How can we have community engagement? And how can we push real public policy that lifts people and changes material conditions in real time? I'm like Fannie Lou Hamer right now, our elder, you know, she's on the ancestral plane too. But aren't we all sick and tired of being sick and tired? Absolutely. Yeah. I just don't know what to do. I'm Man. over it. We need a general strike in this country. We need to do what France is doing. We need to do what the, the people in Israel are doing mm -hmm. against that ultra right wing government. We need to take to the streets and be willing to stay in them streets. I think what, you know, the, the, the major problem is most people don't care until it affects them personally, right? That's right. So it's right. And, that's, and, that's, and that's a sad thing. It's, it's like, you know, where everything that goes on, people will be like, oh, I'm outraged, and they'll look, and they keep it moving, and then it doesn't affect them personally. Nobody makes a move, which is sad. But they, they don't get it. It's always going to affect you. It may be a long distance from you. Mm -hmm. Remember when Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, what affects one directly affects us all indirectly. It's coming to your door, baby. Mm -hmm. Now, it may come to my door quicker, but it's coming to your door. It is a problem that we have obscene wealth in this country. That's a problem. It's a problem that people can't afford their health care. That is a problem. And so we have to get people to understand the connectivity of what it means to be a human being on this earth and how anything that happens to your neighbor, what happens over there happens over here eventually. And we need more leaders with the chutzpah to say it. I feel like America ain't got no brake pads right now. Oh, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. oh. and when you ain't got no brake pads, yeah. you you a risk to yourself and you a risk to everybody else everybody on the road. Else. And I don't understand why elected officials don't see that. Eventually, you're going to be impacted That's by right. all of this stuff you're ignoring. But they don't give a damn because they all comfy cozy for now. They don't mm -hmm. care. What changes though? Like, how, how do you change that? You know, we we had a president that looked like us that a lot of people said they didn't feel comfortable. It, 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 things didn't change. Then we have another president things that doesn't look change. like us that. Um, you know, sometimes shake hands of people that are not there. So it's it's like <laughs> DJ. Am I lying? No, you're not lying. Okay, I'm just I asking. mean, it's also the same president that went to the Ukraine and didn't stop by East Palestine. And I care about that. I do, because I'm a humanitarian. Mm. I don't give a damn. I'm a humanitarian. We can debate about who you voted with voted for another time, but damn it, when you ain't got clean water, we got a problem. I said that that week. I was like, How you gonna go to Ukraine but you right. ain't go to Ohio? Right. Like, that makes no sense to makes me. Makes no sense. I I mean look. It is not, the black community is the canary in the coal mine. What's good for black America is good for America. 
Just look at any of the great feats that have happened that have a social, political, and economic impact. Black people are at the center of that. Black liberation is America's liberation. And so what I say to the black community, and I want to extend it to all people who are oppressed, so socially and economically challenged people, is this. Stop being complicit in our own demise and stop letting politicians whisper sweet nothings in your ear. Hold these people accountable that is it and you can like them you can want to have a beer with them you can want to do a slow jam dance with them that's entertainment but when it comes to the pursuit of life liberty and happiness and they not moving the button when they can spend hundreds of billions of dollars on the military industrial complex but let the child tax credit expire when they can t blame the parliamentarian for not increasing the federal minimum wage mm. can this president has allowed a pharmaceutical company, for example, to charge almost $190,000 a year for a prostate cancer drug on one end, but on the other end, he said he wanted to be president and eradicate cancer. Which is it? Baby, you cannot have it both ways. So I think until we, the people, decide that we're not going to continue to take this, and again, you got to separate the like. You got to se separate the feeling from the function. Mm. I may feel very comfortable and compelled by you, your personality, but your function when my babies are hungry, your function when my babies are dying in schools, your function when my babies can't walk down the street in their communities, your function when big mama and big papa can't get a job that's decent enough to support their families, your function is to ameliorate those problems. Mm. And we can have a beer after, but for then I'm going to whoop your ass on policy and then we can have a drink afterwards Why and you? i don't even drink but y'all <laughs> i'm just saying. i can tell you I'm, looking speaking up, the, I'm speaking the language we know what you mean we know what you mean i get you like you don't cut out a lot of stuff you look fit Ooh, you, can i say i got to give a shout out to my personal trainer derek dardell salute to derek derek dardell mm -hmm. i got to bring him in here one down because y'all i know you do mental health and you mm -hmm. you talk about the whole person and this is it. Sometimes you just got to do some things for yourself. But I'm glad. I'm glad you noticed. Know Absolutely. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the black moderate again because if I feel like the Democratic Party is just full of black moderates. Oh hell yeah, they are. Y'all got one here, Hakeem Jeffries. Mm. Is one of them. Mm -hmm. They just stand in the way. All they care is about their title. It's mm -hmm. okay to be ambitious. I like it. I'm throwing him out. Jim Clyburn is another one. I mean, we can just keep on naming names here. It's the essence of what that means. You got yours, but you don't care if the black community. You know, I was on the panel with advocate uh, Jermani Williams, who mm -hmm. I know you both know, and mm -hmm. he said something really profound. And I'm paraphrasing him, but he said, if one individual black person makes it, that doesn't mean that the black community has made it. That's you know? right. And what happened to our sense of collective responsibility and accountability to one another because we wouldn't be so-called free if there was not that spirit of we got to do this thing together and we have lost it. So again, black faces in high places does not mean the liberation of the black community. Mm. And we live in that every single day. Not much has changed from the 20th century mm -hmm. or the right. 19th century or the 18th century. The only thing is that Technically, they can't enslave our black behinds. But other than that, if you look at the quality of life measures, we still at the bottom, everything that's bad. I want to ask a, a question back to the uh, presidency. W what are your thoughts on, on, on the presidency and if he should run again? He hasn't announced if he is going to run again. And what are your thoughts on? Yeah, if he want to run again, run. But I believe everybody should jump in that race. I'm glad to see Marianne Williams in there. We don't have, isn't it funny how people want you to have choice but then they don't want you to have choice. They want you to make right. choices that they want. <laughs> I mean, this is a republic, right? So anybody can run. The man don't own the office. And so whether it's him or Trump or whoever was in the office, even President Obama, people want to run, run. So I would never say, because I'm not an ageist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope I, I'm blessed enough to make it to my 80s. Same. If the man want to run, let him run. But other folks should jump into the race too. And so Mary Ann Williamson is in there for now. I hope other people jump in there. The water's just fine. Run. My, my only so problem Mary, is I feel like... People start saying, well, he has the best chance of beating this person. I hate that conversation I do and that too. talk. How do you know? The best chance means four people jumping out of the, a primary in 2020. People like Pete Buttigieg, mm -hmm. Mayor, Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, who ain't even well, ain't showed up. He, he ain't even comment on East Palestine oh, for right. 10 days. That's right. He had to be whipped into submission by the lever. Shout out to David Sirota. Shouting out some people today. But... It's America, so we can't have it both ways. Either you believe that people should have choice and not just bodily autonomy choice when it comes to abortion, or you don't. Shouldn't they have choice when it comes to people on the ballot? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, he got the best chance because the system is going to make sure he got the best chance. Everybody Just like they in did in 2016. 2016 and 2020. Mm -hmm. Pete Buttigieg jumped out of the race. Amy Klobuchar, Harris, all of them. 
jumped out of the race to give this man the best chance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So so it wasn't a fair fight. Y'all jumped out so that the candidate that y'all anointed, y'all being the system, could have the best chance. And here we are. That, that, that's what happened in 2016, too, though, because yeah, it feels like it the people got behind Bernie. But the DNC was like, oh. nah. They changed that thing. <laughs> they manipulated the super mm -hmm. delegates and all that. Show. You know, you remember we were at the Apollo. That's remember right. Remember that? Yep. And you know Erica Gardner. Gardner God bless the dead. Yep. Yep. Oh, my God. That's how far back. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. So I, I want people to know, I mean, life is hard as hell right now. Chicken wings are cheaper than eggs. Mm -hmm. People got to work two and three jobs. That's not living. People got to stand up. You got to reclaim it. And so we can't lose hope, but we got to put some action behind that hope, some sweat equity behind that, behind that hope. And there are multiple ways to do it. You don't have to have a, an elected title to be the change you want to see in the world. Fannie Lou Hamer wasn't elected. Now, she did run for Congress, mm -hmm. but she wasn't elected to office, and she shook up the president of the United States of America. That was Lyndon Baines Johnson. Mm. She started a new party, the Mississippi, Democrat, uh, Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, her mm -hmm. and... Uh, white folks who were suffering. So there's always something you can do, but we cannot solely depend on elected leaders to do it, but we got to make a demand. And when you make a demand, it has to be consequences. What do those solutions look like? Well, one fair wage is another uh, program, uh, another move, uh, movement I want to bring to you guys' attention or, or organization that's fine. They represent over 300,000 re restaurant workers and they're working to try to eradicate the sub minimum wage. You know how many people know when you go into a restaurant and you're served, those people are making anywhere between $2 and 15 cents and $5 an hour, depending on mm. where you live, the sub minimum wage. Majority of those workers are women. And, and Saru who leads this organization is fighting to put initiatives on the ballot all over this country so that people can vote themselves a, a, a raise. So how is it in, in Florida, for example, where a president Donald J Trump won Florida, but they voted to increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour. I think those are some examples of solutions. If I could say to you, if you go to that ballot and vote for this, you're about to vote yourself a raise. That wow. gets people to the ballot because guess what? It changes their material conditions in real time. So I want to ask the viewers and the listeners to look up One Fair Wage and support them wherever they are in this country. They're actually collecting petitions in my home state right now, and I sit on the committee to help them push this and win this in Ohio, but they're doing it all over the country. So one fair wage. What was the one thing with Derek? Wage. Oh, Derek, Derek Doddell is, is my trainer. Doddell, baby. Go on Instagram oh, no. and look on Doddell. Financial That's Derek. My oh, oh, Dr. Derek yeah. Hamilton. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I got a lot of Derek's no, in my life. Yeah, I got a lot of Derek's in your life. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Uh, Dr. Derek Hamilton, he leads the Institute on Race Power, mm -hmm. deliberately, Race Power. Mm -hmm and the political economy at the new school. Look him up. He is a stratification economist. He one of the baddest eco eco economists that I know. And he's a brother and he ran the Afro. Now I'm yeah. glad that you came in here and said that because I just feel like at this point we're relying too much on government and we're not pushing our elected officials local all on the federal level to do what we need them to do no, mm -hmm. we're, not. we're just waiting we, we're not doing what we need to do i mean mm -hmm. we're like lambs being led to the slaughter and we don't have to be mm -hmm. this we can change things if you think about it and you all know i was a professor of african-american history i always use this as the most profound example because it's something that people can visualize in their mind if we just think about the whole notion of chattel slavery and if you were of that first generation of Africans and then the next generations of African-Americans that were born in this country, and you could never see an end to that condition, mm -hmm. that your babies could be sold on the auction block, that you t definitely did not control your own body. Think about that. I want people to think about that, that you could never envision. There were generations that could not envision freedom. Mm -hmm. But then there came along that essence that, damn it, if I don't get it, I'm going to fight for somebody else to get it. It might not happen in my own time. And you take that spirit and you multiply it. It don't get more vicious and vile mm -hmm. than chattel slavery in these United right. States of America. If we can overcome that, there's nothing that we cannot overcome. I want people to liken it to the 440 relay, of which I used to run track. I was the first leg. That means I had to be fast. But it's a team sport. That one is a team sport. The baton has to be passed. The first leg of the race's job is to get the lead. When they pass the baton to the second leg, their job is to maintain the lead and increase it. See, that's where we've fallen down. Pass it to the third leg, maintain the lead and increase it. You pass that baton to the anchor, their job is to bring it on home. But the thing is, in life, 
the anchor never ends. The, the race never ends. Mm -hmm. We are falling down right now because we are not maintaining the lead or increasing it. Mm. We are going backwards. So what I want the black people in particular, but American people all around, if you ain't got a sugar daddy, sugar mama, you in the working class. Now you may be in the upper echelons <laughs> of it, baby, you work. Mm -hmm. If you got to have a sugar somebody, mm -hmm. a trust fund, if you don't have those things, your way of life is in peril. And imagine if we united against the ultra, ultra wealthy. And I, wealth is a beautiful thing. But when you got so few people to have so much and so many people to have so little, it's untenable. Mm. So we, the people, got to get up and take to the streets like they do in France and take to the street and let them. In France, they cut off electricity and stuff. They let them know we ain't playing with you. Mm -hmm. Nurses, teachers, doctors got involved. People, they let them know we got to do that in the United States of America. There is nothing we cannot do. if We willing to put a little extra on our ordinary and raise hell when the time comes and not be timid, meek or mild yeah, you got it. when it comes to securing a good life for people in this country. Ooh, wow. Nina Turner. Well, Senator Nina Turner, we appreciate <laughs> yeah. you for joining us. You know, you invited up here anytime, anytime. you want to come on. I'm through. coming back in May, so I hope yeah, you're here. Maybe I could bring both Derricks with me. Please, let's do it. We'll be on TV Derricks. too. We will be on BET and VH1. So in the I, I love that. So, really. Thank you. I well, love Thank you for joining us. It's Senator Absolutely. Nina Turner. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.